Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vicki. Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a lot of thoughts that I'd like to pass along and usually it's when I'm not able to write them down or share them. So today is mm, Wednesday and we're in week three of this mastery class. So I just was having some thoughts from all of the assignments and discussions and everything that I've had this past two weeks and in the other mastery courses that I've taught. And I just want to um, adult to adult be honest with you and let's have some reflection. Let's think about this. This course is about mastery. And we've looked at Robert Greene's textbook and we've looked at how Robert Greene defines being a master and we've looked at how Mozart and other people have developed mastery in their particular field and nothing about that came easy when you look at the struggles of all of the masters as defined by Green. And when I read everyone else's reflections and turning point videos, nothing about any of your journeys or my journey has been easy as well. So I don't want anyone to be offended by some of the things that I say, but we need to be prepared if we want to master anything, anything at all, to do whatever is necessary to reach that level of mastery. It may be things that we don't enjoy. It may be things that at the moment we don't feel that we're really great at. And a lot of times I find that it's things students don't think have anything to do with their particular degree field or don't understand why it may have something to do with their particular degree field. And that's where we need to get our own emotions in check. Sometimes that's arrogance thinking that we know better of what is necessary in a particular program or a particular field or hobby or interest. And a lot of times we do not. If we did, we would probably already be seen at the top of our field. So I find it very interesting when I'm reading people's comments through all of the mastery courses that I have taught, how many times students obviously just do not think some of the assignments and some of the activities that they're being asked to do are relevant or important or worthy of their 100% time and attention. And I find that very interesting because we're talking about the topic of mastery. To be a master, sometimes we have to subject ourselves, <coughs> pardon me, to things that we don't want to. We have to work hours that we don't want to. We have to lose sleep when we don't want to. There are just so many things involved in becoming the top of your field, whatever that is. That's why so few people do that. That's why if you read the book called Outliers, so few people are considered experts or masters in their field. It takes a minimum of 10,000 hours of anything to become a master. So I preface this by saying, are you willing to do whatever necessary to be a master of anything? Even, as, even if it's as simple as a master of your time, a master of your schedule, a master of your emotions. So we have to master that. Now, in academia, what that means is we have to accept that whatever is required of us in a course or a class or a degree program has to be approached with the utmost diligence, with the utmost importance, as if it is the most important part of our program at the time. And guess what? It is. Whatever you're working on this moment for your degree program or your course or your class is indeed the most important thing you're working on at the moment. You need to look at the schedule. You need to put enough time in. You need to master the concepts. I can tell very clearly when students just skim over the reading and skim over or try to flip through the pages and pick out a few words to put in their discussion board or papers. Trust me, this is not the first time I've seen students try to rush. And it's because students put themselves a little short on time. 
that's human nature. That's just what we do. But understand this. If you don't put in the time necessary, if you don't read the materials provided to you, if you don't watch the videos provided to you and make notes and go back and look over the highlights, you didn't master anything. You skimmed it. You might as well not have looked at it at all. Because if you don't understand it to the point where you could explain it to someone else, then you don't know it. Let me say that again. If you don't understand a topic to the point where you could describe it clearly and effectively to someone else, you don't know the topic. And that's hard for people to hear sometimes. So let me tell you this. To master your program here at Full Sail or anyone else, you have to master every course. And inside of every course, every assignment, every week. You have to master every discussion board initial post, every discussion board response post, every assignment, everything that happens, you have to master that. You have to approach that as if your entire career depends on that assignment. Because guess what? It could very well depend on that assignment. So let's talk about what does it take to be a master really quick. You have to master mastery first. You have to know how to be a master, what it takes to be a master. So what I'm going to say is every week in your course, when you open up like this is week three, week three, one lesson, some people haven't even opened it yet. And it's Wednesday of week three. Trust me, I can tell, I can look behind the scenes in the online environment and see who's been where and how much time they've spent. So I know that. So if you're not opening up each week on Monday, reviewing the lesson, find out what it's about, what the readings are, what the assignments are, what the due dates are, and get a handle on what's going to be required of you from week to week, you're not trying to master anything. Let me say that again. You are not trying to master anything. You are trying to shortcut it. That is not going to get it, and you're not going to master anything. That's just me telling you what you need to hear, whether you want to hear it or not. So, you have to open the lesson. What's the objectives? What's the overview? What are we trying to do in this particular week, in this particular lesson? Read the reading. Skim over it the first time if you want, but you've got to find time early on in the week, Monday or Tuesday, folks, Monday or Tuesday, to fully read the reading. Why? Because it's required for the discussion boards on Wednesday. You have to be able to apply those concepts on Wednesday. I know you work. I hear a lot from students. Dr. Billman, you don't understand. I have jobs and I have families and I have kids and I and I and I and I. Well, guess what, folks? Everyone does. Everyone. Working adults. Everyone has those same issues. And again, I'm going to say something you're not going to like. I call that life. And we all have one. So, don't try to use your busy schedule as justification for not putting the time in necessary to master something. No one said it was going to be easy. If it was, everyone would be a master and it would hold no value to anyone at any time. So, if you've got to stay up a little later on Monday night, or get up a little earlier on Tuesday, then you need to do that. If you have a couple of nights where you don't sleep at all, you need to do that. If you're trying to fit something as important and intense as a graduate degree program around and in and out of your normal daily life, forget it. It's not going to work. You're going to get out of this what you put in it. And if it's no more important to you than to just keep putting it on the shelf and getting to it whenever you think you can around everything else that you've got going on in your life, you're wasting your time, energy, and money. It is not going to work. Even if you skim through just barely, you're not going to master the concepts. When you go out in the world to try to use what this degree says you know, you're not going to know what that piece of paper says you're supposed to know. Anyone that looks at those credentials has a reasonable expectation of what the student with that degree should know and be able to do. If you just skim through and give this the bare minimum, guess what, folks? You're not going to be able to do those things. It's going to be obvious very quickly. 
you're not going to be able to use this degree for whatever your goal was and as usually is you're going to blame full sale and not yourself let me say that again you're going to blame full sale and not yourself well again the industry people employers clients customers consultants we're all used to that we know it's human nature it's the human condition to blame everybody else for our shortcomings do you want to be a master do you want to be successful do you want this degree to mean something to you put in the time you have a course at a glance a week at a glance if you're not quite sure how to schedule to fit everything in we provide that for you what we suggest you do on Monday what we suggest you do on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday when we suggest you work on what and I have without fail people saying yes but I work on Monday through Friday honey so do I we all do if you wait to Saturday to start trying to learn these con right now in mastery and are just barely barely getting by what do you think you're gonna do when you get into the intensive degree specific concepts you cannot wait till Saturday your day off to do this again spend a couple hours more before you go to sleep get up a couple hours early you're gonna have some sleepless nights I want to see you walk across the stage full sail with a diploma that not only has your name on it but actually means something Having your name on it's one thing. Having the ticket to your future is something entirely different. Now, what does it mean to master mastery or any other course? Monday when the course opens, every course throughout the program, every week, look at it. What's the overview? What's the objectives? All the objectives are what you're expected to learn, what you're expected to be able to do after the end of that week. Now, what else? Look at the assignments. What are the assignments that are going to be quite required and when they're due? Watch any of the videos, watch any, read any of the articles. When you go to the assignments, look at the assignments Monday or Tuesday. Don't wait till Wednesday to look at the assignment that's due Wednesday. You're going to be rushed. Look and see. Get your wrap your head around ahead of time what you're going to do. Now with me on the discussions, I'm just going to be honest with you, adult to adult. I get sick and tired of telling people to use the templates, double spacing everywhere, Times New Roman font, APA, reference page. I dream about these things. It's a nightmare. When templates are provided, there really is absolutely no justification or excuse for students not doing what they're asked to do. A lot of instructors don't even provide templates and expect you to do it. I suggest you learn APA formatting now. Go to the resources page, look at all of the tutorials, learn APA formatting. What it tells instructors like me when I have to keep making the same comment over and over is that you don't care. You don't care. You don't care that I'm taking my time to write those comments, diligent comments, every week, every assignment, trying to progress you to the next level. You simply don't care. How do I know that? Either you're not reading them, the comments, or you're reading them and not doing what I'm saying. Either which way, it means you don't care enough to apply the feedback. Most students in all of my classes know that the minute you start submitting your work, I start looking at it. If you submit it early, I start submitting comments to you that will allow you the opportunity to make corrections and edits and get it in before the due date to avoid losing points. Why do I do that? Not because of the points, because I want you to do it right and I want you to learn. I want you to learn. But when students do not read the feedback, do not open it, and then on Sunday go, oh my gosh, I just saw your message. Can I have an extension? No, you cannot. If it's no more important to you than to not go in and read your emails and messages at least once a day, then no, I'm not going to give you an extension. I'm not required to give you feedback every day of the week, and I do it anyway because I want to help you. If you're not going to look at it, then don't whine about it you're losing points. Just don't do it. Another thing is, read the instructions clearly, thoroughly, top to bottom, side to side, 
bottom to top. Make sure you understand them. When you think you do, read them again. There are so many people still going into week three in every master's class, not just yours, that for some reason are not reading all of the instructions and not following them. Leaving out important things in each assignment. I'm not sure why that is other than you're not paying enough attention to the details in the instructions. You're not making yourself a list to make sure that you completed them all before you submit it. And then when you look down at the deliverables, when it says attach this, this, and this, and you don't do it, I'm not sure what to make of that other than you're either not reading the instructions, which is unprofessional and not the traits of a master, or you think you know better and you know what we're referring to, which is not professional or traits of a master, or you really don't care, which is definitely not the traits of a master. So follow all the instructions. Use the tutorials. Use the videos that are posted out there. When students ask us questions about assignments, when the answer was already in the instructions with the hyperlink, it's hard to justify that students are just looking at all the assignments and they're just not clear, I'm not sure that's true. So read the instructions, follow the instructions, make sure you've got all the deliverables. Before you submit, go back and look through them again, make sure you have everything there. Due dates. I know it doesn't seem important to you at this point in time. What difference does it make whether I get this research paper in or on Sunday or Tuesday? everything in the world every difference in the world one it's not fair to your classmates for you to get an extension and they did not and let me tell you why because all of these assignments are designed to master a concept and complete them within a certain period of time and if your classmates do that around their schedule and you don't the assignment is not the same assignment that they had you're not completing the same assignment within the same time frames and parameters as your classmates. And that's not okay. Due dates are due dates. That means it's due. If you're at work and you work for somebody and you don't show up for work and don't turn in your work for two or three days and don't call in and ask if you can be off in advance, what happens? You get fired. You get fired. My fear is some people go through all of these motions of getting an education that they can't use because they don't do what's necessary to learn the concepts. So if you don't treat the education as important as the job or career or company that you intend to gain out of it, you're never going to get there. You might, might as well be fired. The due dates are just as important as showing up for work or a client meeting. If you can't meet a due date for legitimate reasons, you are to ask for an extension in advance. Unless you're laid up in a hospital and can't get to the phone. Just because you were busy, worked extra shifts, again, the things I call life, that means you waited to the last minute. That's all that tells me. That tells me you didn't do what the suggested course at a glance says and start early. If something that happened on Saturday or Sunday keeps you from getting your assignments in, you didn't start them till Saturday or Sunday. So a lot of times what students don't say tells us everything we need to know about how hard they're working, how important this is to them. So is it important to you? What are you willing to put in for it? I have my education. I have my degrees. I'm not doing this for my benefit, I'm doing it because I want everybody I come in contact to, with to have the same benefit of a fabulous education as I have had. Because I'm a firm believer of an effective education is the difference between an ordinary and an extraordinary future. But not just the piece of paper. Not just the piece of paper. What you put in and what you know when you walk across the stage with that piece of paper. So, this is Dr. Vicki. I love each and every one of you. I want everybody's dreams to come true. Are you ready to master mastery? Let's go.